Good morning, uh, brothers and sisters. This is your brother Abiah. Um, going to be reading chapter 5 from Gilgal, titled Men and Women Who Stood Out. Men and Women Who Stood Out David was an ordinary man with faults and failings who not, nonetheless stood out as a giant of faith for God and became an as ancestor of Jesus according to the flesh. Heaven is going to be a very interesting place for some. For many, it will be a place of discovery as we all line up before the throne, each giving account of how their life was spent. It will be a discovery to find yourself next to a giant of faith. When your neighbor finishes telling all they have done for the Lord and all you can testify is what the Lord has done for you, you cannot tell at all. Blandina stood up and stood out. It was 177 AD in the city of Lyon, France, and the churches were under severe threat from persecution, stirred, stirred up by the mob and executed by the Roman authorities. Having been conquered by the Romans, Lyon had become a proudly cosmopolitan city, teeming with officers, administrators, and merchants drawn from across the Roman world. And as the effective capital of Gaul since the time of Augustus, it possessed a temple complex dedicated to the former Roman emperor, who of course was now regarded as a god to be worshiped along with many others. This made the situation of Christians in the city precarious Although the formal state-sponsored persecution unleashed by the likes of Nero had petered out the fact that Christians, like the Jews, did not worship the gods or celebrate their feast days, made them suspect to the populace in general. And whereas the Jewish religion enjoyed protection under Roman law, Christianity, this strange offshoot of Judaism, enjoyed no such amnesty from persecution. The very distinctiveness of how Christians worshipped made them objects of much scandalous gossip among the population in general. After all, they had no image of a God to worship, so this made people suspect them of being atheists. What's more, it was rumored that they committed incest, worshipped the genitals of their elders and bishops, and even indulged in cannibalism. While Christians indignantly refuted these claims, fake news then as now tended to carry its own stigma. There was no smoke, surely without fire, reasoned the heathen populace. The hostility was stoked by the fact that many of the Christians were immigrants who had settled in the city from Asia Minor. Hence in 177, when the rage of the mob finally erupted against the Christian population in London, it seemed to have come from the darkest reaches of hell itself. Violence against the followers of Christ spread with alarming swiftness and savagery, with groups of armed thugs roaming the streets, hunting down Christians of all classes wherever they could find them. Men and women were dragged 
through the streets amid a hail of fists <coughs> and stones to the central square of La Leon and then flung into Go Goal to await the sentencing of the governor for their subversive, subversive activities. So whether savaged by wild dogs, gored by bulls, or roasted on red-hot iron chairs in the most brutal fashion, according to Eusebius, they only cried out the words they had reaped all along, the declaration of their faith. In doing so, the Christians were sending out the most subversive message possible to the might of Roman Empire that the things reckoned by men as low, invincible, and contemptible are precisely what God ranks as deserve, deserving of great glory. No one illustrated this subversive message more than the slave girl named Blandina, a slight, frail, despised woman whose heroism in the face of intense suffering put even her fellow martyrs, including even her mistress, who was also sentenced to their area with her into the shade. Other Christians failed when facing the horrors of Roman torture, but not Blendina. Though suffering more than any, she held her faith firm to the end like a beacon Amen. Her compassions had, in fact, greatly feared that on account of her bodily frailty, she might not remain steadfast under torture. But although the legate, but although the legate caused her to be tortured in a horrible manner, so that even the executors or executioners became exhausted as they did not know what more they could do to her she still remained faithful in fact the only confession they could wring out of her was I am a Christian and nothing wrong is done among us having already endured every imaginable torture and cruelty Blandina's broken body was suspended on a stake and exposed to the wild beasts because she appeared to be hanging on a cross and because of her intense prayers she inspired the other Christians in the midst of their own agonies it was reported they had looked upon their sister and seen in her person the one who was crucified for them incredibly none of the beasts touched Blandina at the time and she was taken down from the stake and cast back into prison the Christians believing that God had preserved her for other contests so that her victory over the forces of darkness might be even greater. Um, sorry, I was taking notes here. After the scourging, after the wild beasts, and after the roasting seat, she was finally enclosed in a net and thrown before a bull. Jeez. And having been tossed about by the animal, but feeling none of the things which were happening to her, on account of her hope and firm hold upon what she had been entrusted to her, and her communion with Christ, she also was sacrificed. Incredibly, it appears that even after these terrible ordeals, breath still remained in Blandina's body, so she was finally killed with a dagger. 
when we get to heaven, saints like Vandina will have a story to tell. Stories of what it cost them to stand up for Jesus. While the hearts of many around failed, Christians in the 21st century, all well, all I'm sorry, in the in the 21st century, all we are called to do is just to live for Him. So, what will be your testimony compared to the heroes of faith in the early church? Just that you got a new job or a bigger house? Question mark. Um, and then there's a there's a uh, for see for those of you who um, who want to more teaching on this, uh, you can there's a um, QR code that they here are, here I'll enlarge the QR code um, right here. So it's, there's a QR code that you can scan um, with your with your phone. It says not all bad things that happen to us as believers ends badly. If the devil dangles your past at you, rise up and turn things around to achieve glory. Jesus needed Judas. Jesus needed Judas. Um, make the devil pay tremendously for whatever he had done to hurt you. So this is that was chapter five, um, and I'm gonna. I'm gonna pray. Um, I'm gonna pray for us as a group, group one, um, from this chapter, because it's a really, uh, this is a really um, powerful testimony right here um, on Blandina and, and then the persecuted church. It's like, you know, a lot of you guys that are watching these videos are from different country. I'm currently living in, in the United States and the persecution that we have here really isn't we don't really have a person we don't really have persecution here it's I mean it, it's it's starting to get a little worse but nothing like this it's um, in the United States it's more <laughs> it's it's more honestly I mean I, you know it's, it's it's more the church is persecuting itself it's 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 really it's a bad thing here in the United States people the, the gospel is being taught in a way that, um, you know, there is no victory um, over their sin here in the United States. Is where a lot of the, the, the ministers are preaching. It's 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 a very watered down gospel message. Um, there's no uh, instead of celebrating victory, they're celebrating they're celebrating uh, recovery. Uh, celebrate recovery. It's more like they're they're, they're they're talking more about their their past and failures, and um, instead of you know about what God has done for them and how to overcome sin, um, as well uh, as well as you know the the church. I don't know if you guys, I'm sure you guys are aware. Um, you guys can go on YouTube and, and you see, um, you know, the Americans are just putting videos up of their of their fellow Americans, uh, you know, just talking bad about them and he this or she that and this this and that that and it's just it's more it's more of um the christians are making a mockery of of themselves it's really a shame um and very few people are standing up for righteousness um as did blandina um she stood up for righteousness and and actually the bible says that um that were to provoke each other to good works, and if anything, um, this story provokes me <laughs> to uh, to step up, step it up, and pull it up, pull it up, and um, encourages me to um, to be more serious about my faith and my walk in God, and um, makes me want to dig deeper into the scriptures. Um, and uh, so, I'm going to just go ahead and pray uh, for us as 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 a group. Um, now a lot of you guys are um, eight hours ahead of me, so it's eleven thirty in the afternoon for you guys uh, where you're at, and uh, I'm just barely waking up. I, God, the Lord's been waking me up really super early. It's like I said, it's three in the morning here, so 
But um, anyways, um, I'm going to pray and uh, we'll see, see what the Holy Spirit has right now. So, Heavenly Father, um, we boldly come before your throne of grace. Um, we ask, Lord, that you would give us um, the faith of Blandina, Father, that that if ever um, we, we had to, God forbid, have to go through the things that she did, Father, that that we wouldn't deny you, God. That we would um, continue to to um, to speak forth um, the truth that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and there no is no other way to the Father except through Him. A lot of people in this world they want to uh, go around the gate to get to God, and they want to try to go under the gate and around the gate and over the gate. And, there's no other way than having to go through the gate. They have to go through Jesus. So I just pray, Lord, that um, that you would remove the blinders from um, from the eyes of of those that have little faith, um, Father, and that those who are struggling with Antichrist spirits, um, that you would open their eyes, um, as your word says, God, that you've come that none shall perish. But that all sh all would be saved through repentance through Jesus. So I just pray if there's anybody listening to this video right now that this would be a testimony. The Bible says it's by the power of the blood and the word of the word of our testimony. So I just pray that this testimony. If there's anyone out there that's that's um, that that's uh, you know maybe taking the class and and they and, and they maybe they don't they don't believe truly in you and you know they're just going through the motions that they would truly surrender their lives to you god that they would truly deny themselves as mandina did and that they would pick up their cross and they would follow you at all expenses at all costs fathers it's, it's you know we need to be all in this is this is not a game this is not this is not a game um this is not to be to be taken lightly our faith because the Bible says that we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So we um, we just thank you, God, that there are, that there is victory over the forces of darkness um, if we um, submit to you. It's through submission uh, that victory is is um, manifested. Um, so I pray that we would that we would all, as a whole, as a body. Um, that we would submit to you in a greater way. God, bend us, God. Teach us, Lord, how to be how to be men and women after your heart, God. That would teach us how to count the cost, God. Count the cost. Count the cost. I hear the Lord say, count the cost. We need to count the cost. We need to we need to count the cost. The Bible says um, to be dead is uh, dead, to be dead is to be alive in Christ. We have to be dead to the world, the things of the world. Um, I just feel led to. Um, I feel led to read. Read here. I just. I just hear the Lord wanted me to read this to you guys. Um, it really, I believe, would tie into what what we're um, we're talking about. Excuse me, give me a sec. I grab my Bible. It's, it's, I'm going to read to you guys Romans chapter 6 um, because this is what we how we need to live our, our, our lives in Christ. We need to um, read this, this chapter and really um, process it and, and pray that, that, that this will become us as Christians. God, God's looking for, God's coming for a pure and spotless bride. Um, an unblemished bride. He, he's not coming for a bride that's stained and spotted. Um, that's, you know, the Bible says that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. So we need to take that, not take that lightly. Um, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and read chapter 6. It says here, uh, Romans chapter 6 says, What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin how can we live any longer in sin or do you not know that 
All of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a, in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that, so that you obey in its evil desires. Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. For sin shall no longer be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. Amen. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, those of you who are still struggling with sin, um, just know that God is, is, is after your heart. The Bible says that God is knocking. He's knocking on the door of your heart. And I don't know who I'm speaking to, but, but um, God wants to come in to your heart. And he's not going to force himself in. He's going to knock. And he wants you to open the door and you to let him in. So he can teach you the things of God. So he can teach you how to walk in victory. To teach you how to be a daughter. A daughter and a, and a son. You may have, have a father. that You may have grown up with a father that abused you. You have, may have grown up with a father who taught you bad things. Well, God, God is your heavenly father. God wants to teach you good things. He wants to teach you how to be how to be a good child, a child that that wants to, to love others, a child that forgives, that can you can forgive. You have to forgive your your earthly father for the things that he's done to you. You have to forgive your earthly father for for the harm that he allowed you to go through. You have to forgive your neighbor. You have to for for whatever they did to you. You have to forgive 
your husband. You have to forgive your wife. You have to forgive. The Bible says that we must forgive if we want to be forgiven. The Bible says to pray for those who persecute us. So let's pray for those right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for those who persecute us, God. We pray that you would grant them the spirit of repentance in Jesus' mighty name, God. That you would grant them the spirit of repentance. That, that the spirit of repentance would would um, just uh, would be theirs, God. That that you would grant them salvation, Father God. We don't want anybody to die. We don't want. It's not about an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. We are supposed to pray for our enemies and love those who harm us and bless those that harm us father so we bless them in the strong name of jesus we release every person that has ever harmed us god in jesus mighty name father we pray for their salvation in the name of jesus we bind all unforgiveness and we repent of all unforgiveness in the name of jesus and we command that it, it loose us in jesus mighty name father i thank you that we have ears to hear as a body i thank you that um that we have ears to hear and we have eyes to see what what it is that you want us to do today and tonight god i thank you that that we are so submitted to you that we want to hear from you that every step that we take every word that we that we that we make would be to glorify you and to exalt you in all things father we are already dead as children of god as as um as as born again christians we are already dead so so we cannot be killed again we are already dead and alive in christ jesus we cannot be killed they can nobody can kill us because we've already been dead we are dead to the world but we are alive in christ and we we need to be light to our community we need to be uh, beacons of hope to our community when we go into the marketplace we need to be shimmering and glowing the presence of god we need to so that others would be drawn to us to ask us how come you're so happy all the time how come you're so joyful all the time how come you're so blessed they're going to want to know and they're going to want to seek god and seek answers so father we just pray uh, for that the joy of the lord would be our strength today father god I thank you, Lord, that your word says that everywhere our feet shall go, we shall take the land. So I thank you, Father God, that we walk in power, love, and a sound mind. We bind all fear in the name of Jesus. And we command fear to get out of us in Jesus' name. We do not have the spirit of fear, but we have the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. We pray for our overseer, Pastor Paul Janadu. We pray for him, God. We pray for him in the name of Jesus. We pray for his wife. We pray for the overseers and general overseers over New Covenant Church. We pray for them, God. We thank you that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. In Jesus' mighty name, God, we bless them going in. We bless them coming out. We thank you that you only you, God, will open doors that no man can shut and shut doors that no man can open, Father God, in this ministry. God, I thank you that you're raising up mighty men and women of valor in this school father god men and women that are going to stand up for truth stand up for righteousness and not bow a knee to jezebel we bind every jezebelic spirit in the name of jesus over this ministry and we command you to get out jezebel in jesus name every ahab spirit that will not stand up for righteousness in their family we bind you in the name of jesus and we command you to get off and get out in the name of jesus every demon speak into your mind we command to shut up and get out in jesus name father i thank you for a banner of love over new covenant church a banner of love and mercy and grace over new covenant church in jesus mighty name amen